Hey guys, I'm Lewis and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to go through my investment portfolio, updated for January 2021. Any new additions, any disposals, I'm going to talk about what my feeling is about the market at the moment. Uh, I've had some big changes this month, so let's get right into it. This is not a recommendation. Lewis Arden's investment portfolio, its holdings and any related buy or sell decision are not recommendations to invest or not invest. The portfolio should be seen as a source of information and education only. You must always do your own research, make your own investment decisions and seek a regulated financial advisor if you are unsure of any investment. So this month has had some big changes. Um, I have added my unlisted investments to this portfolio. Um, I've been investing in equity crowdfunding and un unlisted investments for the past 18 months to two years. And I thought it was appropriate to add these in types of inv investment in because Going forward, I would like to invest 10% of my capital into these unlisted investments, um, essentially because these, this type of investment for me has a, it's a much higher risk, but a much higher reward as well. Um, so if you can pick the correct investment company and you know how to analyse the company and the people running it, you can do extremely well. Um, so you'll see from my holdings that I've got a very big portion of my portfolio in free trade and the, the commission free broker, which I do use as well. Um, so I bought them shares in June 2019 and I'm essentially valuing these shares based on the latest crowdfunding round, um, which was done in May 2020. Uh, so you'll see them up like 99% on them, which is obviously fantastic. Um, and I expect that to go up even further in years to come. Um, so you'll see from like Moneybox, um, Coconut and all them, minus 1.5%. That's because I've bought them at the latest crowdfunding round and there's no, there's been no other crowdfunding round after that, which means there's no real way of valuing the shares. So if they crowdfund in the future, then I will then have a new price. Could be lower, could be higher. More likely to be higher because they're all growing companies, uh, startup growth companies. So, like I said, I want 10% of, of my portfolio to this type of investment. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much one of the big things for this, for this month. Um, so you'll see my portfolio values at £5,470. So, slowly get my portfolio value up, which is nice to see. Um, and yeah, so like I said, the target allegation has now changed. I've taken a little bit from the FTSE All World Index, uh, that's now at 25% allocation. And then I've taken 5% off my emerging markets allocation to account for the listed investments. Um, these listed invest unlisted, in unlisted investments, it, it's a, on a case by case basis. So it's not like I could have one year where I don't invest in any of them because I don't see any opportunities. But quite often there's maybe two good opportunities a year where you look, you, you do your research, you get the investor pack, and then you make the decision whether it's worth it or not. Um, so that's why I've got about four or five on there. And you'll see Brewdog as well, and I have my reasons for that. I love my beer. Um, you get free beer with the Brewdog shares, and I get a 5% discount for life. So I've also calculated that um, as an investment benefit, because like I said, I'm gonna be drinking beer for the rest of my life. So, um, well worth it. So my, Return for this month. So I have updated the, the way I calculate my return. So when I started this portfolio, I basically didn't add any more funds into it. So it was just a straight up profit and loss. You've made what you've made. That great, fantastic, easy, easy to do. Um, but now I'm starting to add more funds into the portfolio. I need to calculate my, my return more accurately. So I'm using the time weighted return basis. So basically, what this does it account for any cash flows in and out of the portfolio, which basically means it calculates the return on sub periods, um, which this is a month by month basis. So it calculates the return on a month by month basis and then sums it up at the bottom. So my time weighted return based on money in and out, but well, it's actually just money in because I, already, I haven't taken any money out. I've just put money in. Um, so my return is 23.9% compared to the FTSE all world, which is at 31.4%. Um, so I'm lagging the FTSE all world a little bit. I'm not too concerned because the main reason for this is I've had a decent cash balance. Um, it's been at around 50% for a long time. So 
if I was fully invested, I would be beating the FTSE All World Index. However, as I've said before, I believe there could be opportunities in the market and if, if the big indexes fall, I have cash ready to buy the indexes at a, at a better price. Because at the moment, the indexes are, well, for all time highs, so, um, yeah, like I say, I've got cash on the sidelines. I'm invested, but I've also got cash ready to go should the worst happen. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. If you want to know about, more about time-weighted return, drop me a message and I'll let you know um, how I've calculated it. Going forward, I am doing my time-weighted return from the 1st of May 2020 uh, because this is, the, this is the month when I started heavily investing back into stocks. Um, before this, I had a big cash balance and some of my unlisted investments which hadn't moved in value. So I think this is the correct the correct thing to do. Start from the 1st of May 2020 going forward. So that's what you'll see. Anyway, now moving on. So performance today. So individual stocks, so I'm up like 6.5% on them, which is not too bad. Um, my Bitcoin's up 447%, for, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, Bitcoin's had an absolutely wild ride and we'll see where it goes. It's impossible to say what's going to happen with that one. Um, but I will do an individual video on Bitcoin explaining what it is and why I'm investing in it. Um, when you listen to investments, up 35.5%. Uh, it's due to free trade. Um, and I'm expecting when free trade crowdfund again this year, that value will go up again, which is fantastic for me. Uh, then my gold's down 3.3%. Um, so, yeah, gold have been battered a bit recently. Um, but I'm, ho I'm holding gold as a hedge. Uh, for the financial system and currencies so the same reason i'm holding bitcoin um but like i say let's be totally honest these short-term gains do not really matter like it's what happens over a decade what matter so 10 20 30 years that's what really counts um yeah it's great to go over what performances over the past nine months but in the grand scheme of things it's not important um, it's what's important is investing Investing early, investing often, investing consistently, and knowing what you're investing in. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, um, but now onto my addition to this month. So I've had quite a few additions this month, more than I usually would. Um, so let's start with Pfizer. So Pfizer are a pharmaceutical giant um, based in the US. Um, they are well known at the moment for producing the first coronavirus vaccine. Um, absolutely massive pharmaceutical company, one of the biggest ones in the world. Um, they're constantly producing drugs. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Um, and from my analysis, I believe they're undervalued at the moment. Um, they're consistently produ producing free cash flows. They're paying a consistent dividend. And with these coronavirus cases and them developing a vaccine, for me, that's going to be a consistent source of revenue going forward. Um, as well as other vaccines um, they'll be producing. And because they have produced this coronavirus vaccine, um, it's shown to me that they can act quickly, act fast, um, get vaccines through trials. And overall, pharmaceutical companies are going absolutely nowhere. Um, healthcare is one of the biggest sectors in the world. Um, it's a sector I'm looking into quite a bit at the moment. Um, like I say, people care more, about, more and more about the healthcare. Healthcare is not going anywhere, diseases aren't going anywhere. I'm sure pandemics will could be... Maybe not more often, but they can potentially happen every few decades or, well, every century there's going to be a pandemic because every century there has been a pandemic because back in 1918, Spanish flu, 2020, coronavirus, and then 1800s, we had all sorts, smallpox, polio and all that stuff. So, like I say, diseases will be here forever um, and that's why pharmaceutical companies will be here forever. So that's one reason I'm investing in Pfizer. Edition number two, so I said in my last video that I probably wouldn't buy another real estate investment trust because when I'm investing in property or real estate, I'd like to own it in my personal name. However, this opportunity has come up and I think it was too good to turn down. Um, Empire State Realty Trust, so that is the investment trust which owns the Empire State Building plus other buildings in the New York uh, metro area. Um, yeah, they're one of my additions for this month. So. My thinking behind this is after doing my discounted cash flow analysis, um, they seem undervalued in my opinion. But as well as that, I was looking through the financial statements and you can also value a business on the sum of its assets. Um, it's, it is a method that some people do use. 
I use it as a secondary method in some cases because discounted free cash flow for me is the sole ultimate method to value a business. However, if you can sum up all their assets and the company is trading below what for all of us total of the assets are, I think it, it is a sensible um, way to value a business in some ways. So the Empire State Building, so let's get on to that. So the Empire State Building the, is one of the most famous buildings of, in the world. Um, their observatory at the top produces hundreds of millions of revenue per year, absolute cash cow, obviously coronavirus, can't do that. But when that's up and running, that is an absolute cash cow and it's just free money for the Empire State Building. Like literally they make hundreds of millions in profit just from people going to the top of the building. Um, yeah, to me that's a fantastic, it's a fantastic business. Um, as well as leasing the office space to many companies. And as well as that, the Empire State Building. It's the Empire State Building, like the most famous building in New York. Um, after the Statue of Liberty, it's probably the next most famous thing in New York. If you think of New York, you think of the Statue of Liberty and you think about the Empire State Building. So it's one of the only buildings in the world which has a brand. Like there's not many buildings which have a brand. Um, I think in the UK, um, there's obviously the castles and the stuff in London, Houses of Parliament and all that. And then in Dubai, there's, or Abu Dhabi, sorry, there's the big building, Burj Khalifa. Um, like I said, there's not many buildings around the world which have a brand. And the Empire State Building, just because it's the Empire State Building, has its own brand. Um, so if a private equ private equity company was going to buy the Empire State Building, they'd have to cough up a lot of money. Um, and anyway, from the financial statements, um, what I should have gone to before, I said all that. Um, the Empire State Building, so at cost in the financial statements, I think it's at like $1.1 1, $1 .1 billion to the trust. I and mean, it's got depreciation on it of like 300 million. So at the moment, the, car the carrying value of the Empire State Building within their accounts is $800 million. So, if you go into Google and you'll type in, what is the value of the Empire State Building? It'll come up at 2.3 to 2.7 billion dollars. So, in the Empire State Realty Trust accounts, they are showing the Empire State Building is worth 800 million. Due to accounting and the way accounting is done worldwide, property, real estate is depreciated. So, sometimes it doesn't show its true value within the accounts, uh, financial statements. Um, so, I believe the uh, Empire State Building on a value basis is undervalued in their accounts by two billion, which is absolutely bonkers. Um, yeah, in my opinion, it's absolutely bonkers because it's something I don't agree with accounting wise. I don't think real estate should be depreciated because if the true value of it is X amount and you're saying it's less, for me, that's not true and fair. Um, could go on this for day, go on about this for days, but basically I see an opportunity in the Empire State Realty Trust because some of their real estate, such as the Empire State Building and the other offices, is being depreciated at a certain rate. And But I actually think it's worth a certain amount. So I think all of their assets are worth a lot more than what the, cap, the market cap of the Empire State Realty Trust is. So like I say, it's something, it's a different way of valuing it. But for me, I see an opportunity there. The Empire State Building is an absolute landmark. It's a statement. Um, and if a private equity firm, for example, like Blacks, Blackstone, they own the Sears Tower in Chicago. If they was gonna buy the Empire State Building, it cost them three or four billion, just because it's the Empire State Building. So, like I say, that's my main reason for holding them. Hope it makes sense. Move on to the next one. So, on to the next next pick. Um, the next edition for this month is Madison Square Garden Sports. Um, essentially, this is the company which owns the New York Knicks, it owns the New York Rangers hockey team, and it also owns the Madison Square Garden Stadium, the most famous stadium in the world. Um, I'd say Wembley's more famous, but I'm biased because I'm from the UK. Um, <laughs> um, uh, another similar situation, I think some of their assets, if you add up the Knicks, Rangers, and Madison Square Garden, what, Garden, what they would, if you were going to buy them in the open market, compared to the market cap, um, there's a big discrepancy. Plus, uh, plus, I think for yeah, so for the last year they've actually been free cash flow negative due to coronavirus. So they can't use the stadium. The teams haven't been producing a lot of revenue. When we get out of this coronavirus pandemic, there's gonna be an absolute massive boom around the world, 
and sports isn't going to be away from that. People are going to be rushing to go to the stadiums. People are going to be rushing to go to the basketball and hockey games. And I think this is going to be a good pick because the the market back in March, um, sorry, back in May when they split from when the company was split up. Um, yeah, it's been going down. Um, it went down quite a bit. It's recovered a bit recently. Um, but like I say, when things are back to normal, I think this company will start producing a lot of cash flow, profits, and I think it'll be a good pick over the long term. On to the next one, so Coca-Cola Femza. So this is kind of an emerging markets player once again for myself. So Coca-Cola Femza are the largest bottler in Latin America, so Mexico, Central America, South America. Um, they are the largest bottler and distributor of Coca-Cola um, in them regions. Um, they have a very large market share of it. Um, so the way Coca-Cola works is they don't do the bottling themselves, they do it to their partners around the world. Uh, there's European partners, Asian partners, literally everything you can think of. Coca-Cola Femza, Fem Femza have a stake, it's a Mexican company. Um, but yeah, like I say, this is a play on Coca-Cola. It's a similar, similar. I've got Coca-Cola on my watch list, but I think they're overvalued at the moment. But Coca-Cola Femza, they've, um, after doing my analysis, I think it's gonna be a good pick. Consistent dividend pay, consistent free cash flows um, in emerging markets where their economies are growing at a quicker rate than the world economy, which in turn, I think will be good for their business. Um, and it's very consistent, Coca-Cola, worldwide, everyone knows it. Everyone drinks it worldwide. So. Like I say, it's another, it's another Coca-Cola pick, um, and I'm more than happy owning this stock. It's got a good dividend yield. Bill and Melinda Gates are large shareholders through their foundation. The final addition for this month is Facebook. So Facebook, I have to admit, they are one of my favourite businesses. Um, them and Google are probably my two favourite businesses, and I can't wait to own Google as well when it gets to a price I'm happy with. Anyway, Facebook, one of the best business models around zero debt, high profit margins, high return on equity, um, and they have the network effect, of course. Honestly, fantastic business model. Um, yeah, it's a bit ridiculous how much cash flow they produce. Um, yeah, so I actually owned Facebook a few years ago. Um, long story short, I ended up selling, um, but now I've bought them back at a price I'm happy with. Uh, the results of come out recently and they've blown it out of the park. Um, a few years ago they got in some hot water over regulation and stuff but I think that's coming, it's coming to an end. There's always going to be scrutiny on Facebook but I think if they put the right safeguards in place I'll be absolutely fine. Producing consistent, literally for me it's one of the best businesses around um, and it's why I'm holding them. I'm going to do a, I will do an individual stock analysis on Facebook so I, I think they're fantastic. Um, but anyway, we'll go on to the disposals now. Um, so the only disposal this month has been AT AT and T. So controversial. I do not like selling stocks. I am a very much a buy and hold investor. Um, buy and holding for long term, holding for decades. However, the only time I will sell is when I think my analysis of the company has been wrong, or I think something underlying has changed about the business. I, I admit I. I did my analysis on at and and when I did it back in like May, June time, I think I got a bit greedy um, in terms of what I was looking for from a stock. So I saw that big fat juicy dividend yield staring at me, staring at me in the face, seven odd percent. I was like, oh my God, let's have this. Producing free cash flows. But then recently I've been doing more analysis on the company and I've realized they're not really that good of a business. Um, they are debt fueled to the max. They've got over 200 billion in debt, um, which they are going to be paying off over the next few years. Well, it'll be a lot of years, but I think it's too risky for me. Um, I don't think their dividend is as safe as people think. People just look at at and and think dividend, 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 which is great, but if the business underlying isn't that good, we've had a few acquisitions, which when I had a look at them, again, they were not good at acquisitions. So, like I said, I sold at and I did make a loss on them. I think I lost about 8%, um, but thankfully I did receive the dividends um, from them before selling, so it covers the majority of that loss. So, like I said, I'm not very happy with myself for this, but I've had to sell at and because 
like I say, I need good companies in my portfolio and I've realised that I'm not a good company. So I hope you enjoyed this portfolio update for January 2021. Um, might be a bit long-winded some, long some of the bits, but like I said, I'm very passionate about my holdings, very passionate about my investments, and I hope you stayed this long. Um, yeah, going forward, I have got some exciting updates for February. Um, I've got more capital coming to the portfolio, which I will explain in next month's video. Um, exciting things happening with this portfolio. I'm taking it to the next level. I am really cracking on and you know, really making good things of this portfolio. So hopefully my returns can keep up um, and we'll see if any buying opportunities come up in the market for the indexes. Because um, I don't want to hold on my cash balances forever. I do want to be fully invested because it's the best way to be. Um, but like I say, I am a keen fan of taking opportunities. So we will, yeah, we'll see from that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Um, all the content I'm putting good work into, I'd really appreciate that. Please leave me a like, leave me a comment. Um, please share this video with your friends, family or colleagues, anyone who'd like to watch anything on investing. Um, send me a message, send me an email. I'd love to know what you thought, um, how we can make the videos better and everything. Um, so yeah, anyway, so if you would like a free share with free trade, um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, if you sign up for my link, you'll get a free share worth three pounds to 200 pounds, um, which will be with you within a week's time. And then as well, if you would like free Bitcoin with BlockFi, if you sign up for my affiliate link below um, and you buy $100 worth of Bitcoin, you'll get $10 worth free. Um, and what's good about BlockFi is they give you 6% interest on your Bitcoin. Not too bad, really. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.